Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, all that other good stuff. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author in one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Be an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have... Um, David Jones on the line, and he's co-founder and managing partner over at Alta Alliance. Dave, welcome to the show. Morning, Adam. Great to be here. All right, Dave. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we'll talk about uh, B2B sales is hard, so what to do about it. I mean, and with your background and, uh, and uh, in business, it's going to be great to get perspectives um, on this topic. But maybe just to give us a, a, a start to get us going, um, tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got started in this career. Sure. I kind of came up through the technology world. So first 10 years were the IBM, both East Coast and West Coast. Then I was hired by uh, Larry Ellison uh, when Oracle Corporation was just a a $55 million company and hired to help build out the enterprise division. From there, went on to start uh, three different companies and then uh, saw a need for a service like Altus Alliance and uh, started that back in 2003. That's awesome, and uh, and and I wanted people to get a feel for your background, so they know that you're the guy to be to be uh, to be commenting on this. When you, uh, so let's just get uh, get it going. So why do you think B2B sales is so much more difficult today? Because you've been in this space a long time, so I don't know. Go back five to ten years. Like, what have you seen that makes it so different now? Sure, it, it's uh, the sales discipline, particularly in B2B, has changed probably more than any other discipline. So just to give you a statistic that drives it home, that it costs 28% more uh, to generate the exact same gross revenues today um, as it did seven years ago. And so, you know, why is that? Well, just the whole function has become, um, you know, a lot more complex and sophisticated. Now, the, the basic premise of sales hasn't changed. That is, it, it is the intersection of interest and awareness, and you're trying to find people out there that are interested in your product but just don't know about you, and so that's the, the challenge in a nutshell. But the way to do that has changed. So in the old days, a good salesman could go out there and just through the pure, you know, raw power of persuasion, personality, and, and charisma, you know, they could go out there and get a sale done. But today, it, it's just not that way. Um, you know, today, you know, you need good tools in order to help get the job done, like CRM systems like Salesforce or Teams to help you keep track of your interaction with customers or uh, marketing automation systems like ActOn or Outreach to help launch uh, marketing programs to help find and cultivate uh, new leads. So it's just it's become a lot more difficult and challenging for, for uh, sales organizations. How has the um, how has the overall decision making um, process really changed over the years to become more complex? Because I feel like things definitely aren't getting easier. No, indeed they're not. Um, just the key decision makers uh, they've kind of gotten used to the B to C style of sales. You know, witness mm-hmm. Amazon, where they can go home at night and they can take a look at a whole bunch of different products, research them, uh, get you know references and reviews from customers, take a look at different prices, different sourcing, order it and have it sitting on their front step by the next morning. It Mm -hmm. doesn't quite work that way in B2C, at least not yet. And so uh, the expectation is a problem to begin with. 
But because of the ability of the key decision maker to be able to do all that research on their own, that probably the biggest change is that today when the salesperson walks in the door, that key decision maker may already be 70% of the way down the runway in their decision making process or in the sales cycle itself. So unlike the old days where the salesperson comes in and really tries to sell somebody on something that they may not even know about or know that they need, mm-hmm. today they're having to go in and determine how they can align their product and service with the needs of that customer that who already know exactly you know what it is they're looking for. Hmm. So the the process is getting more difficult. We know, um, and we know that the, um, the the sales cycle is changing, right? And just expectation across the board. Um, what can a company do to help? Um, I don't know if I'd say become more efficient or how to to kind of change or alter to this current landscape. Like, what are some things they can start thinking about or doing? Sure, and this is what Altus does. We are in business to help our clients to accelerate their top-line revenue growth through creative and innovative ways of, you know, of uh, practices in sales and marketing. So uh, we recognize that every company is different, uh, different challenges and opportunities, and so the solutions, of course, are different from er- for every company. But just if, if we're kind of to boil it down to the three things that we see most often are needed, especially in this this strange and unique era that we're living in in 2020 and 21. Uh, Those three things would be, you know, first, just rethinking this new world order, this new virtual world that we uh, live in, and Mm -hmm. adapting and innovating to that and putting a plan in place that is aligned with, uh, you know, what your customer looks like, how they operate, and and the, the nuances of this new world that we live in. Second thing would be, uh, just effective lead generation. It is, Adam, you'd be shocked at the number of companies that we see where they quite simply are not putting enough effort into the the, uh, the lead generation itself. It's it's akin to a, a farmer, you know, not throwing enough seeds out, but expecting mm-hmm. a full yield in their crop. So really building a, a, a effective programs around lead generation to fill the top of your sales funnel so that you can achieve the revenue objectives that you hope for. And then the third thing is, uh, you know, right people and right tech tools. So Mm. as it's always been, great businesses are always built by great people. And so getting the right people in the right places has always been important and remains so. But the difference today is that um, whoever uses technology to best advantage will ultimately win. And uh, so getting these tech tools, figuring out which ones you need and being able to get them in the hands of these people so that they can be most efficient uh, in executing their job is critical. And and as with any tool, uh, the tool itself is not going to win the day. The the people have to know how to use them and use them well. And when they do that, that, that's the real difference maker. That's the, the competitive advantage. So I'd say those three things. Uh, you know, rethinking the new order, effective lead gen, and right people and tech tools are kind of a good starting place to take a look at how to address the, the challenge of B2B sales. What types of companies um, do you find are typically a good fit to work with Altus Alliance? Is there a particular niche or it has to be a certain size or sector of company to um, to work? Like, What's been your experience? Yeah, in general, uh, we work mostly with companies in the, let's say, $10 million to $100 million stage of growth. And so um, I can give you a couple examples if that be helpful. Absolutely. Okay. Um, in the, uh, the the tech side of things, which we've got, uh, you know, 15 different partners and 15 associates that can really address this segment, um, we worked with a company called DocuSign that a lot of people, I think, ought to be familiar with now. This is the electronic signature company. Mm-hmm. We got involved with them when they were essentially a $0 million business. And we helped them to put together um, effective strategies and to build their sales organization and actually even came on board as their acting VP of sales um, for them and helped them build to uh, about $25 million over the course of, of several years. Uh, of course, today, um, they uh, they took United Airlines place I think on the stock exchange and they are a 
um, which is about a $50 billion business. So a huge success story. Um, one that's maybe not quite as dramatic, but more like down to earth is Washington Shoe. And this is a great company that's been around for decades uh, making rubber boots. And uh, this is a company that, that just needed to adapt. They'd been successful in the old world order and were trying to find their way into the new world order. So they brought us on board uh, to help them in uh, building out kind of a new organization and putting the tools in place in order to help them be more effective than, than they have over these, these past years and working with them. So those, those are two examples. Oh, that's awesome. So, Dave, um, if somebody is listening to this and they want to learn more about Altus Alliance and to connect with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, probably the best idea is just, to, you know, go to the website, and that will give you a better idea of the kinds of things we do. There's uh, video references and success stories that are on there that will talk more about different examples of what we have done. And, and then um, you can feel free to contact, contact me directly um, if you'd like at uh, Dave at AltusAlliance.com. Fantastic. Well, Dave, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, giving your insight and expertise and some actionable things that we can do out there in the, in the B2B sales um, landscape. So great stuff there, a lot of value added today. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to to uh, be a repeat and return listener. Um, so definitely do that. And Dave, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been great. Thanks, Adam. Enjoy it.